Occasionally, I like to shoot film. And one of the cool things about film is that it's an entirely physical process, you know, loading the film, unloading it, rewinding it, developing it yourself or getting it developed in a camera store, whatever. It's a very cool process. The only problem with film is that it is entirely physical because at the end of your development, you get back negatives, which look like this. And I actually have like a booklet of negatives here. All these negatives. The problem is if I want to transfer these to the computer for editing or for like, you know, tune-ups and just general like sharing it and actually getting it onto the internet, well, you need to digitize the film somehow and that involves scanning it. Now, you have two options for scanning film. One is to get it developed and scanned, but that costs money because the place I get it, I think it costs five euro to scan and about three euro to develop. And the scans they give you are not great, to be honest. They are these really like low resolution JPEGs and they look like crap. And also you can't edit a JPEG nearly as easy as you can a RAW file. So then that gets the brain turning, you know, okay, so I'm gonna be scanning this stuff at home. But how do I scan it at home? Well, you have to buy a scanner and put that somewhere and you have to put the film in the little thing and put it in your scanner. And, and if it's not a good scanner, it's not really worth it. But then the brain turns again and goes, well, if I have some sort of device that can like take a look at something and like almost like take a picture of it and gives me really good files for editing, almost some kind of like raw format, what could it be? It's right here, a full frame mirrorless camera. And this also works for APS-C but it works best with full frame cameras to scan your negatives from your, when you're out shooting film. So to scan our film, we're going to need a few things. Obviously we've got our camera, we've got our macro lens with one-to-one -one capability. This is the Sony 90 millimeter 2.8 macro. And this lens is actually a beast for scanning film. The second thing we're going to need is something to hold the film in front of the lens and it has to be held at exactly the right point. So on your camera, you might notice that there's a mark on the camera. It's sort of like a circle with a line through it. That's what's called the sensor mark or like the film plane. Basically, that is where the actual sensor or film is in the camera. And on the Sony, it's quite close to the front because it's a mirrorless. Now, this macro lens here, at the one-to-one -one position, the focus distance is 0.28 meters or 28 centimeters away. So I have to mount my film 28 centimeters from the mark on the camera body, not from the front of the lens, from the camera body. And in order to do that, I've got this gizmo I found on Amazon. And this is made by Polaroid. And it's basically a tube with sort of a spring-loaded clampy thing on the front that allows you to slide your film in. And then this can hold the film directly in front of the camera. And then we've got some adapters here to extend this. So this is its length normally, and that isn't quite long enough. So if I use like a step it down ring, it won't quite be far enough away and I'll never get it in focus. So I found on eBay a 52 millimeter thread adapter, which extends the thread out a little bit. And then I'm using two step down rings to step down the size. And that holds the film at exactly the right di uh, distance away from the camera. So now we've got a rig set up. Now we just need to pick a negative. Now we need something to put the negatives in. This is a thing made by Kessler and it will hold six frames of your film, which is generally how film is kind of stored. Uh, this, these sheets store six frames at a time, which is excellent. So we're gonna mount our film in this frame. And this can be quite finicky to get lined up. If you're quite careful here. Now don't try not to touch the film if at all possible. So now our film is in our holder. We need to remove all the dust we can from this because if you have any dust on this, it's gonna show up really clearly on your scan and you're gonna to have to edit it out, maybe Photoshop fill or something, but it's better not to have to do that in the first place. We're just gonna remove as much dust as we can. Now we're just gonna slide this into position. So now with our negatives mounted inside our sort of weird adapter, we want to take a picture of them with a light source shining behind it, which is this. And we wanna line this up so that it's pointing pretty much directly at the light source. But you want to leave a gap, and the reason for the gap is so that 
when this is in focus, we want this to be completely blurred and we don't want any detail from like the individual LEDs on this panel. So now we just got to turn on our camera and actually start focusing and making sure that this is aligned because you can move this up and down. So now we just need to make sure that's all aligned and it's actually way overexposed. So I need to adjust the settings on the camera in order to do this. And we're going to open up our lens to around f3.2 sounds good. And then we're going to set our ISO as low as we can go. Uh, which on this is ISO 50. We've got our focus ring here and we're going to do this manually because there's no way the autofocus will be able to handle this. Now you really should have a steadier setup than this. I normally have this mounted on a tripod on one of my big lights, but we're going to do this like so. And when it comes down to it, shutter speed really doesn't matter. You just need to get the exposure correct. Now, when you're focusing this, you need to focus on the grain of the film, not the subject of the picture. And the reason for that is if you miss the focus on your film camera, you'll need, if it's out of focus, well, this will never be in focus. So you need to focus on the actual grains in the film. You also really should have your histogram up because that'll allow you to tell if you've got all the detail of the picture spread across because you don't want to overexpose some parts. You want to capture all of the dynamic range of the film. So we're just going to use the remote. That is our film. That's the frame of our film scanned. And this is where it gets really easy. You can just slide through and you really should check your exposure and your histogram for each frame and adjust your shutter speed up or down a stop to uh, adjust the exposure a little bit. But there's four scans done. So now all we got to do is take these pictures, load them into Lightroom and process them. So here we are in Lightroom with our scanned images. And the first thing we want to do is make sure that we focused our macro lens correctly. So if we punch in here, you can see that the grain is quite well defined. You see here in the hat, you can see all the specs of the grain. So this is uh, reasonably well scanned. It's not 100% perfect, but it's close enough. If you take a look at the histogram, up in the top right here, you will notice that the histogram has everything kind of central, which is what you want. You'll notice that there's a big spike of black here. That's the, the frame around the image. Like you can see it there. So let's start processing this. First of all, we need to crop. So we're just going to crop in. Now we're going to straighten this a little bit. I think it's slightly off. So now that we have it cropped, we're going to have to invert it now. Now when you're inverting an image, there's a couple of ways of doing it. The most common way you see online is to reverse the tone curve like so. And that looks okay. Apart from the slight green cast, this is because the Sony camera is putting a slight blue cast. When you invert blue, it becomes kind of green. Kind of, we can ignore it. Just put in black and white mode, we get our black and white image. But the problem with doing this uh, tone curve inversion is the sliders are reversed. So if we go to exposure, you can see this is darkening and now lightening, which is super stupid. So in order to make Lightroom behave properly, we're going to re-put our tone curve back the way it was. And we're going to do the inverting in Photoshop because we can do it with that and make a duplicate. So we're going to edit in Photoshop. Here's our image. And all we need to do is we're going to put a new adjustment layer. And I generally apply like black and white and um, corrections before you do your inversion. I find it tends to work better. So if you're processing color film, uh, which I'll show you in a future video, you have to remove the orange mask from the film, which is kind of complicated and tricky. So if you apply that to the actual inverse, you get a much better image rather than applying it to the, uh, the inverted version. So anyway, first of all, black and white filter, that's just to remove any uh, color from the image. New adjustment layer, and we're gonna go invert. And there's our image inverted. Now we're just gonna go file and save. So that's saving the copy of the image now. Lightroom, we've got a new image on our line here. So you can see the original. Here's the inverted. And this image now didn't come out great when I was developing this. I didn't leave it in the developer long enough, I think. So it's slightly not very, it's not very contrasty and I like it a bit contrasty. So we're just going to fix that uh, by upping the contrast. So the, about, the advantage here is that because we've scanned this using a DSLR, we can actually now work with this the same way any digital image, even though it was shot on film and gives you that aesthetic. So we're going to bring the shadows way the hell down. 
even the black's quite far down. That's not looking too bad there. And we'll pull the whites down a little bit and the highlights down a little bit. And then we're going to make sure Lightroom's in black and white. We're going to do a little bit of clarity. Just to help bring out a bit of the grain. I'm going to sharpen the image slightly. To help give it a bit more of an edge. And there we go. That's reasonably well processed. That doesn't look too bad. I can pull the exposure up and down a little bit if I want to brighten it or darken it. But I'm going to leave it like that because only a quick edit. And that's pretty much it for this picture. It's, it's reasonably well done. You've got the histogram is pretty good. We've no pure whites. Um, we have a little bit of black. I'm not entirely sure where that is. Yeah, just under here we've clipped some of the blacks or crushed them a little bit. But overall it's looking, it's looking pretty sweet. So now all we need to do now is you know, go export our DNG master and then export a JPEG and our Instagram versions and whatever we need to do. And that's pretty much it. So that's it for scanning film with your DSLR or mirrorless camera. It's a really good way to scan your film. It gives great results. You get a lot of control when you want to edit them in comparison to those crappy lab scans, which are just JPEGs. But that is it guys for this video and I'll see you next time.